how good has Capture Rage been? Can we get some salutes, please? Uh, I'm 25 seconds in here already, but... I mean, the zooming, the, the layout has been amazing. Uh, of course, having the ability to go back, which is great. Uh, speed up, uh, which is so unique in Age of Empires, right? To be able to to just rewind. I could do it right now, but I got to stay in sync with my caster, right? So uh, props to them. Uh, if you think back to Hidden Cup 2, <coughs> Hidden Cup 3, they always had something for me, and we've been working hard. Or they've been working hard, and I've just been asking for things, basically. <laughs> Uh, well, Little John here is playing as the Malian Slam against Aztecs. Aztecs pretty common. And are you surprised to see Malians on Arabia? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, first thing that comes to mind is is Viper. I know Viper's always been a fan of, of Malians in certain certain situations. Um, then again, I mean, I don't know if that confirms the Viper, but uh, <laughs> if... if um, Viper chose Malians and we saw him, I'd be like, okay, yeah, of course. That makes sense. So um, when I interviewed Nikov after he played uh, Lix in his best of seven in the qualifier to make it to the main event, mm -hmm. he had had Huns in game one Arabia. And this is the best example of it. Uh, it was Huns against Chinese. And I think, Slam, you'd recognize that Chinese just feels way stronger there as a Civ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I asked Nikov about that, and Nikov's like, I knew that if I lost that game, all my civs were better for the other maps. When you do a draft, uh, yeah. sometimes you're not giving up a map, but you figure, okay, I will be at a disadvantage here. So I, I kind of see Malians as a civ where you maybe go for something a little out of the box. Maybe try Drush FC. Yeah. Uh, maybe, you know, it's, it's in civ that you don't always know what to expect from. And if you get a win against Aztecs, which is a top tier pick on the draft, you start to feel really good. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. I mean, especially about when it comes to picking civs, I have realized that some players, um, Arabia won't be a priority as much. So mm -hmm. the majority of the civs will be picked for other maps. And then there's not too much stress about Arabia because, you know, a lot of civs can play Arabia. Yeah. And um, in this situation, though, I guess Philip the Good did pick Aztecs first and is picking, you know, using it on Arabia. Yeah, sure. Yep, yeah. it's different. You know, some people, like I think the majority, probably make sure they get a good Arabia pick in early. And it actually makes it rather easy to draft for Arabia because mm -hmm. yeah. there are flexible civs and there are good land civs. Chinese is the best example of probably good on mud flow, but not great on anything other than Arabia. Interesting yeah. patience here from Little John. And what he did was, he, don't lose that. Okay. Uh, he brought in this boar early because he knew Philip the Good's eagle was around Slam, and he didn't want to get lamed. Mm -hmm. And that was not the best boar lore there from Little John. Yeah, I mean, it's it was a yeah. We got to give him some credit though for getting in early. But uh, um, are you talking about the second boar? Wasn't yeah, the, best? the second boar was a little awkward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. All right. So, question for viewers: We have a lot of people watching. But many of you guys have, have called off work sick. <clears throat> I hope you get better, by the way. <laughs> uh, or you, you know, just have been here all of the last 48 hours. Um, many of you may be writing down who you think is who, which is what we like to see. Which two players are missing on your list? Why are you guys laughing as if you would actually tell your bosses you're sick when you're not? Why would... No one would ever do that, so... <clears throat> I'm wondering nice. which players you haven't seen yet. Okay, we got someone just said Viper and Leary. Someone said Leary and Yo. Nikov and Leary. Viper and Leary. Really? So a lot of people don't feel like they've seen Viper here yet. They haven't seen Viper, really. Huh. And look at these walls for Little John. This is, you know what this reminds me of? It was King of the Desert, which is only Arabia tournament. Nikov, I'm referencing Nikov a lot, but Nikov versus Draken. Draken's an arena player, and he almost beat Nikov in a series, picking Malians and other civs and doing this right here. He's just turned this into an arena tournament right now. <laughs> oh, man. Um, the Draken you're speaking of. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. But he wouldn't, the absent, yeah. he wouldn't really be playing here, of course. And you know what? I thought he was going to go for a greedy FC. He's actually going for scouts. It's a cute little base, man. <laughs> it is a cute little base. And, you know, it's going to deny this um, pre mill I mean, Philip the Good is going for a pre mill drush. What? And we we know what he did. I don't know if you, you noticed it. Um, and doing a pre mill does affect your eco a little bit. And it's not going to be able to do anything. And Malian buildings are a little cheaper, too. So you can afford to do this. 
I the play that comes to mind when I see early walls in some cases is MBL. MBL? Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Doubt's another one that comes to mind. We actually have a barracks, so is his man at arms still? Vivi, maybe? Oh, Barrels, man. maybe? Hmm. Uh, so it's too many players. It's just. Yeah. You, you, you think you're getting closer on one player, and then. I don't know. It's all looking very similar sometimes. Yeah, it's, I mean, the game is. They're at the top, so. You gotta execute in so many different things. I actually hate the fact he's still going for Man at Arms, but I'm curious to see what the eco looks like because it doesn't look like he's gonna have the res to get eco upgrades and the Man at Arm upgrade here, Slam. Yeah, no, it's not looking like it, but I, I do think Little John is probably gonna go for, you know, a, a really fast range after this. Okay. And, um,. At least that's my guess. And Philip the Good, his map is not looking too closed. All right here, you see the scout engaging and good and micro from range. Little John. That's a really good decision there from Little John to just skip the upgrade. Yeah. He's got to keep his scout alive, though, in, ide in an ideal world. Back away. Oh! Okay, I guess that's fair. I, I'm actually... Here's the thing, though. I don't think that... Maybe wrong. Little John, did he really need to even engage in that fight? He could have gone man at arms. He could have. Well, I mean, what is the, what are those militia going to do? Yeah, there's nothing they can do. And those man at arms are going to be great at breaking open walls. So once he gets two archers out, sends them straight over to fill up. He'd have man at arms. He'd have archers. But maybe it was an eco issue. I think this is possibly a bit of an overinvestment for Little John. It definitely was an eco issue, by the way, because he had yeah. to choose between getting bid axe and man at arms. And he didn't yeah. know if the enemy would be exposed. But, okay, this is an approach that Leary takes a lot. You go one range, eco upgrades, and then you send villagers out to the deer three at a time. Other people do it too. But notice the two ranges for Little John. Don't you feel like a lot of yeah. players would go one range in a blacksmith and not double range? Yeah, that is usually what they go for. Um, sometimes if you have man-at-arms left over, I think the blacksmith might be better. Uh, just because you can you can hack away at walls and yeah. then that is going to help you to get in. So, but because he's lost his man at arms, he's probably just thinking, well, you know, there's there, I don't need to rush that fletching. And these pigs. Look at the wall difference, by the way. Philip the Good is really trying to get some walls down here. Philip the Good with two eagles, two skirmishers right now, and knows that the enemy is yeah. going to be sending something forward from ranges. But everything's looking pretty good for Philip the Good. So one, one thing I also did notice, uh, I went on a bit of a Leary binge about a week ago, watched about five, six of his games. He would keep his, I know other players do this too, but he was really keen on doing it. And it's keeping that one straggler wood around the TC unfarmed. So uh, for example, maybe the north one, you're not going to really? see a farm on it for a very long time until it's done. And he always will keep that waypoint there and he'll build farms around it and he'll never get rid of it until it's done that's a that's a unique thing to bring up here i think yeah um now i saw it from another player as well to, to leave those stragglers there for excessive amounts of time but you know mm -hmm. what i'm always preaching with low the legends is keep them there so you can pull villagers off and farm pretty quickly and yeah. philip the good here he has not invested as much into the military and you're really seeing the difference here he's taking some losses not bad, yeah, he though. looks like he's going for two ranges. Um, interesting, okay. Sometimes with Aztecs, you'll just go for the one and go skirms into mm -hmm. full barracks and castle, but two ranges works as well. Interesting how he's extended his walls so far on the right side, and then he's been so casual about leaving the other side open. It doesn't seem too... He doesn't seem too worried at all. <laughs> yeah. And that I don't think that was the best engagement there from Philip. Um, he lost a bunch of military there. Not a very offensive force either. I'd always be worried about going for a lot of skirms in this position because the enemy is a knight sieve. And this is so sneaky from Little John. Now, not going to yeah. lie, there's some slight bias because I've said that Little John is my hero for this tournament. But if this army can sneak <laughs> over... Has that been spotted so, by Philip the Good? Oh, no, don't Philip? shoot it! Never mind. Go ahead, Slime. Oh, I was just going to say, Philip the Good planted a farm right on that straggler tree, so therefore confirmed, not Leary. Okay. Maybe he felt like there wasn't enough wood remaining, and 
now uh, the enemy's got skirmishers out there and you've really got to worry especially since they're fully upgraded so little john hoping to run away you can see that he's been spotted there slightly by philip i think yep but i think the eco is pretty good for both of them behind this i i uh yeah i was a little worried when i saw double range but i think maybe that's something you can do with malians at the start because it's so cheap yeah looks like little john's trying to go for a sneak attack to the right but He's just going to end up running into walls from Philip. Okay. I'll show that in a bit. I'm curious to see if Little John can get value here. I mean, he could try and take out these archers. But good micro from Philip. And Philip making a lot of archers. So this might be crossbowmen in Castle Age for him. Yeah, here's that yeah, sneaky we're... force here on the right side slam. Maybe a villager. Unlikely, I'd say, with a proper reaction. Okay. Oh, yes. Yep. She's she's alive and she's well. Not well, actually. I mean, in the game, she still functions the same, but she's probably really damaged. Yeah, she's hurting. Um, okay, so Little John's up just a little bit earlier. Do you... What do you think about, as we see double stable, double range is the choice for Little John. What do you think about oh. how we have the Aztec player going into crossbows? Not that it's bad. But we also see a lot of instances where if you're expecting knights, you go eagle and pikeman. Uh, oh, as Aztec, eagle As pikeman. Aztecs, yeah. Like, why not eagle pike? I'm not saying crossbow's bad, but is it unique possibly to the player, maybe? Oh, ah, yeah, that's a good a good point. Because uh, if anything, I was going to expect one range from uh, Aztecs, yep. followed by three barracks into Eagles, and then of course there's that bonus step you could do if there's a lot of knights on the field where you add pikes. I know for instance, Vinch Vinchester loves doing pike eagle, and it does work really well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess we're, we're just going to be see a full archer play from, from Philip instead. I don't know what it is, but I just got that feeling. You know that feeling you mentioned you had with a few yeah. players? Oh, yeah. And I'm feeling little John might be Velez. Oh. That's, that's the feeling here. You have double stable, double range. Uh, nothing too crazy, nothing out of the box. Not taking any risks with the archers earlier. Solid Wait. micro. I, I feel in, might have a finish you, pro here. Did you say Velez was little John or Philip? Little John. And Philip, I don't oh, have a read John. on, okay. but it is. Yeah. It Honestly, playing into archers is something that Velez is really comfortable with. So yeah. it, it could be either of them. Maybe it's Velez versus Velez. Mm -hmm. And I, I bet Little John is expecting eagles, maybe. I mean, usually yeah. you're adding those two stables and, and you're mixing crossbows and knights against eagles, which do pretty darn good. Um, but he's going to he's gonna soon realize it's just archers. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a Velez mirror matchup? How does that look? What's the meta in a Velez mirror? Like Velez against Velez? Yeah. It's a weird one, right? It's hard to know what to do. You don't see it frequently. And oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, in the end, Little John backs away, and it does have a massive hill right in front of Phil the Good's base. So this is dangerous. Yeah. The tricky part about going two stables, two ranges, is it's quite the the eco investment. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of holding off on earlier TCs. Looks like he's getting a TC up, and it usually works best against pure eagles. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Liking Little John's micro and macro. You got a TC at home now. A university to get ballistics. I'm getting vibes, Slim, but I I know that we're just here to cast. The viewers are supposed to guess. Well, I'm gonna shut up a little bit about it. <laughs> um, but three ranges. You know who I'd be saying right now? Three archer ranges in 2021 into ballistics. I'd be saying Slam for Philip the Good. Oh yes. Uh, you yeah. you my Is friend. Is he doing a third one? He's doing a third one. Yep. Oh yeah yeah. That would be okay, you. Okay. I would be. I know. But the reason behind it is maybe it's because he sees the knights, and yeah, true. He wants to get sometimes uh, he wants to advantage. get that big snowball, and because Blue's focusing on two majors, if you want to call it that way, then you know he doubles down on one, and it ends up being more efficient. Look at the micro from both of them. Look at the dodging. That might be Leary. Oh, man. Philip the Good might be leery. Everyone's going to do that at the high level sometimes, but it does excite you just to think about the possibility. Oh, man. And he's able to chase him off. He doesn't have plus two on the Knights, which make... This is why it's it's tricky going both stables and ranges at once. Um, like I said, it works 
probably better against a full eagle build yeah. from red. And I think that's why I brought it up, Slam, because I think Little John was expecting the eagles. He saw so many skirms. Yeah. I don't think yeah. he was ever expecting to see this many cross movement from Aztecs. It, it would suit certain players to play into archers. Many people yeah. guessing uh, Hera. Uh, I think Hera very comfortable with doing something like this. Uh, maybe like. I think, you know, thinking of big names like Yo and Viper, they'd probably switch into Pike and Eagle. So mm -hmm. there definitely yeah. are preferences at the highest level within our high level. And now that's such a big mass that I don't think the Knights contribute too much or the crossbows from Little John. And Little John yeah, needs to exactly, back away. Yeah. And Little John has stopped production of Knights, you know, ages ago. Mm -hmm. The only thing he's keeping up is crossbow. So, you know, he might be regretting a little bit going for that stable play and, and that might have just had something to do with maybe lack of scouting and and checking to see exactly what red's gonna go now funnily enough this is soon gonna get to a point where little john's defending with siege and then eagles make sense if you mix in some eagles to snipe the siege then your crossbows can continue to do damage but i'd say very um both of these players obviously have insane skill here three tcs different army comps but 84 population versus 100. It's 62 villagers for both. Crucial eco upgrades are in. This is so even. Yeah. It's just a matter of who's going to start maybe mining stone and, you know, going for that middle control somewhere on a little hill. Yeah. Or these... maybe not. Yeah, maybe maybe never go to stone and just go fast arbalest if you're a micro nerd. Yeah. And it almost looks like Phillips Eco is heading in that direction where a couple more farms, you know, maybe in a little slip a bit of idle time there and maybe you might be able to get up and go for the early arbs. Sees the knights here and choosing not to convert with the monk. I guess you'd get the conversion but lose the monk there. And now, uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh, that hurts for the knights. Then again, they were useless anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> but it could get a Magnal shot in here. Oh, redemption right now? Does he, Wait, he only really? has one monk and he's getting redemption? Oh, I don't know. It's not. I don't think this is the right time because there's so many crossbows on the field. Hmm. All right. We've got a player comparison of Velez to Velez here. So just in case you're wondering <laughs> if we have the Velez to Velez mirror <laughs> matchup. <laughs> oh god. It looks. It looks pretty even. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, well, there's literally one monk. It's 100 gold for the monk, and then it's 475 gold for redemption yeah, just to convert just, one Maganel. I'm not feeling it. I feel like the monk's just gonna get picked off with one move with the crossbows. And it's not that confident approach that would really excite you with the crossbows, right? A lot of players would try and micro yeah. against it. Certainly, they're, they're staying alive, but now the siege continues to mass. More monks are needed, and little John putting up a real fight here. Yeah, and if you think about it, Siege Workshop, 200 wood, mangonel, wood and gold, you know, you could add that together, and that's probably the same cost as Redemption in itself. Maybe. So uh, what I'm trying to say is, Philip the Good, maybe the Siege Workshop could have been a better option. Yep, or, or maybe a few eagles in the mix. This is maybe the weakness of playing into yeah. this, and look at that, he snipes the monk, the micro from Little John is just, it's insane. Yeah. It's crazy too, because Little John or Philip the Good, it felt like he had such a larger army, and for some reason, Little John is. Ooh. I, oh yeah, I'm seeing this. dude, I told you that I thought there were gonna be some big names in this final best of five, and it really feels like it right now. Look at the imp time. We're gonna yeah. see a market for Philip the Good. He's gonna sell wood and click up to imp at a similar time. This is yeah. really impressive from Little John to have gone into a oh big Maganel conversion. Oh, it's paying off. Oh, and he gets I the uphill shot. And now another one. Not too bad there, Slam. Another? Uh, pretty good, okay. And another good connect. Yeah, but um, just, just back to my point real quick. I was impressed with Little John because he went into an army comp, which didn't seem as good. He really gave himself <laughs> a fighting chance there. But now he's getting supplies, and I think he's going to think towards a different unit. And that's a it's champion. Yeah, that's actually going to be... this. Uh, a really good unit for for being up against Aztecs here. Actually, really like very good. I mean, it's going to counter his crossbows once he gets all the upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, yep. It's going to be great against Eagles. Either player heading to Stone until now. I think we're going to see Stone mining. I just have a feeling we'll see a mining camp on Stone. Wait for it. Five, four, three, two, one. Ugh! Okay. Anyways, um, there is Stone for Philip the Good already. And, but the castle is going to be delayed for both. So if it's just Arbalest, 
you do need quite a mass to be able to take out champions from Malians because with full upgrades mm -hmm. they're going to have yeah. eight um eight pierce armor but the thing is slam all you need to do in red's position click arbalest click bracer what you need to do in little john's position is upgrade demanded arm upgrade to long sword upgrade to two-handed swordsman and upgrade to champion it's going to take forever yeah it's quite the road and the other thing is his production buildings are up front so if Philip the Good has all these tech advantages and is putting on pressure, Little John's gonna have a really hard time mm. even just massing the army. Yeah, I could see it. Now big Maganel shot would help. You gotta get a shot here. It's gonna go down and confident micro, but still decent connect for Little John at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, Philip sees the barracks slam. He knows what's coming. Boy, if he had the stone and a castle drop there, I that mean, would be obviously sick. would be great, but I mean. So crazy. Resources. A Philip the Good is pretty much just sat at his base all game. <laughs> you know, like he he yeah. went for the, the fast militia, fast feudal thing, but just played defense and boomed towards Arbalest. It feels so yeah. much like theory. It was very key just to get those TCs up early and making sure he's building those constantly under any sort of pressure. Hey, uh, good work from Little John. Just plugging the gaps here. I mean, all the small things that could go wrong. And he's doing the right thing. Also picked off some units in the middle of the map as you now see champion for Philip the Good and supplies. We're seeing supplies so frequently. Of course, it makes sense if you're going for champions. It makes it cheaper to produce them. And two-handed swordsman will still complete. The Arbalest have not really done damage for Philip. Yeah, he looked like he wanted he wanted to do something with them going south, but I think he ran into a bunch of buildings and just realized that maybe that wasn't the best approach. Oh my god, big moment here. Is Philip gonna notice this? Philip? Oh. oh my goodness, the shot from little John! Oh, man. Considering the situation and how Philip needs to damage with these arbs, that was yeah. horrible for him. Yeah, the, he, he needed all of these arbs, especially with this extra defense um, on these two-handed swordsmen. I think he's still one-hitting them, though. Yeah. Yeah, he's still getting good value against them. That's the thing you need yeah. to get champion, and you need so many. But I guess if you look at the military numbers, uh, it's it's a lot more... E it's closer to being even than it would have been without that shot. Yeah, and, and Philip is making a good choice. He's, he's doing a quick... Quick change, quick uh, tech okay. change here on over to champs. Yep. It's, it's good because Aztec champions are the stronger of the champions in champion v. champion fight. And also, Philip's going to sneak away with this relic right here. There's still more relics, and Aztecs get 32% more gold per relic. So if it's just champion v. champion, I prefer Philip's situation. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with the... Well, he, he's got two relics. Yep, yep. He'll probably be able to get one more, maybe the one in the middle. Even with two at this stage, pretty solid. Both players with insane economies. Champion yeah. will be much later for Philip, though. This could be the most important stage of this game. Yeah, I'm curious, what else? Being Malian, so you, you got your champ Scarls, your, your really good champs there, and but what else are you going to mix in? Because I think the superior combo is the Arbs and and Aztec champions together. Did Little John double click his vills? Why does he have 33 villagers building this? <laughs> it almost looks like he double clicked his vills there. It's weird. Okay, he must be panicked. He's gonna stonewall the sides. Weird to me. But he might deny this castle. Yeah, uh, Philip kind of out of position here. It does seem like an overkill on the castle production yeah, building. <laughs> a little weird. And here comes Philip. Uh, Philip patrolling the arms into a house, so doesn't have the army here. And Philip trying to, to even get a gate up there. That's not working. And now Little John has a much stronger economy in terms of ill numbers. Also raiding the blacksmith and gets in on the right side. Oh, yeah, yay. Yeah. And now that, that castle is defending uh, Little John quite well at home. Whoa. Maybe that rush was just what he needed. Yeah. I still think maybe, you know, build that with 20 villagers as opposed to 40, <laughs> but whatever. And now yeah. another Maganel shot possibly for Little John as he takes the score lead. And the production's insane. Does not get the shot, which should be expected at this point. But it's also expected that Arbalest, especially Aztec Arbalest, who lacked Thumb Ring, should get mopped up by these aye, champions. Aye, aye. 
This is really unfortunate for Philip. I, I think he was in a really good spot. His army was just on the left, and then his castle got caught, and just to kind of the wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Instance. And yeah, the arms are still getting good value here, but Little John throwing in the score lead, and many people said that maybe they haven't seen Doubt yet. Well, Doubt is known for this right here. Failing with these castles, and my goodness. Here's the tricky thing too. He's got three champs in the eco, and sometimes by habit, you're just thinking, oh, my TCs will just clear out the champs. Yeah. But these are Malian champs, right? So they're gonna be lasting a lot longer, just being annoying. Mm -hmm. I think that Little John will also get that, get that idea of, let's just continue to raid the right side. Keep that open, yeah. ram that down, whatever. Um, and maybe, I I'm rather surprised actually, just follow this all up with Trebs take out that castle mm -hmm. from Philip as he finally finishes it. Now, Garland Wars would be huge. Garland Wars would give him, uh, at least with all the blacksmith upgrades too, a total of plus eight attack on his champions, yeah. while Malians would just have plus two. You know, that raid that Little John did on the right and slipped some champions through, it was actually huge. Like, yeah. if you look at Philip's eco right now, there is a lot of farms and there's no vills around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's even having stone walls and it does seem like that raid shook him, man. He, he's just yeah, got nothing. And now I think little John's in a position to distract on the right side and then push that middle area. And I'm just waiting. Yep, there's the trap slam. Little John could actually close this out. Yeah, this is exactly what you want as being Malians with these champs is having your opponent be chasing you around as you're, you know, you're producing somewhere else and raiding somewhere else. Dang, man. Now, Jake, take a look at this. Look at how Little John has recognized the situation. Distract with the army on the right, pull Trebs to the middle, and now raid the left side. And it's a panic castle yeah. for Philip the Good as he reacts to it. Protect that area. I'm seeing a lot of outposts out there. Look at Philip. He's just... Majority of his army's on the right chasing yeah. this one army. Now, he did just get Garland Wars. So currently his champions are stronger of the two in a champion v. champion battle. 13 plus 6 with Blast Furnace. Then it will be... Plus eight, but I, I think maybe even little John is just comfortable streaming in champions to take out castles at this point. Yeah, I mean at this point, like even if little John's losing units left and right here, he's just controlling the game. He's making the first moves, and mm -hmm. Philip's just constantly reacting. It sucks to have to react like this. You have to send champions it's away terrible, from the middle yeah. now, yeah. and then your army arrives finally to do some counter damage, and there's a castle there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a terrible feeling because you know what's happening. You know you need to be hitting him, but you can't because yeah. you, you know he peers over here, then you gotta move over there, then he peers over there. Wow. Sometimes you almost have to take a leap of faith and let something go just so you can get an attack somewhere. He's done that slam. He's he's let something go. He's gonna let the middle go, which is the problem oh, yeah. all along. And the moment where the game started to shift was probably the Maganel shot and then the switch of direction from Little John. Murder yeah. holes in for Philip mm -hmm. Good, by the way, but Castle down. Oh, okay. Now take a look at this. Here's that another leap of faith. Gonna run into the eco, realizing he's probably screwed, and now he's he's like, this is my turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is so bad. Oh, oh no. I think it is actually. Wait, Garland War champions are no joke. Whoa, you're right. They're doing some serious damage to that castle. Well, like it, he's also getting it, destroyed in the middle, yeah. but is he is he going to take... I guess at what cost, Slam, right? He's probably... If he That's takes true, the castle yeah. out, he's probably going to lose everything. Um, he probably dove in and he realized, you know what? I don't think it's worth turning back here. I yeah. have to try and do something. Yeah, yeah. If I'm If I'm raiding, my arbors are going to die. Yeah, and I think... It was the right call for him, Slam. But unfortunately, yeah. even with Garland Wars, he just does not have the eco right now. He actually has 42 on food, which is impressive, but he has zero on gold. The production should be there for Little John. And the GG, well, no GG actually, but they may have called the GG after the yeah. game concluded, of course, which means we wouldn't see it. Little John wins the first game, and I'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you, Slam, it really yeah. looked like Philip the Good was full of confidence and was just going to sit back, get to Arbalest, and win that game. Am I wrong? I absolutely agree. I thought it was Philip's, um, Philip the Good's game as well. Going into early imp, he had a huge amount of arbs, everything he needed. He just needed to hold the, or he just needed to get his tech advantages. But the, the key thing that little John did is he, he thought, yeah, 
he's probably got a bigger army let's just go run around make the first moves make yeah. him react yeah maybe a bit of hesitancy from philip he went forward yeah. with the arbs he saw unfinished houses as part of a wall didn't think about running in he just wasn't sure and then when you're not when you're not forcing reactions from the opponent they're going to force you react to react at least the best players will and yeah. this is a big thing on the grand scheme of things when it comes to the draft, too, because we mentioned how Malians is kind of a later pick. Aztecs is an early pick on that Civ draft, and it's mm -hmm. seen as probably better on Arabia. So good scheming there yeah. long term, I think. And I'm just going to go back to one of the bigger moments. Of course, like there were many big moments, and I think the champion switching sides was the biggest thing. But Capture Age Pro should show us this shot again, one of the bigger mango shots, and these are less needed value. At this point... Oof! At, at that point, Philip had a yeah, 20 was, military lead, and it was all was looking huge. good for him. Dang. All right, well, let's go to the yeah. achievements here, Slam. I imagine economically, it was probably more for Little John in every category after the raids, and definitely more wood, more food, more gold, more stone. Uh, even Aztecs having the relics didn't seem to matter too much there. Uh, what was the total eco killed that game? Put up the stat in game something like okay take a look at this philip the good had a total of 160 uh three villagers and ended with 68 and little john had a total of 146 and ended with 127 he just didn't lose bills wait philip the good capped at 163 villagers so or what right? it means with this new oh, statistics here is that's total so that's the amount of villagers gotcha. he had created uh, which is mm -hmm. a really interesting stat, right? Because that just basically shows yeah. that he had to reboom. Yeah, I see now. And, and invest a lot more into that, which means you wouldn't have the champion numbers. Poof. All right, man. Well, um, yeah, that... that was a crazy start to the series, all things considered. Yeah, absolutely. I think we'll probably see a bit of a comeback from Philip for here for sure. I think that this could go to five games <laughs> so? it's just yeah. like because yeah. philip was ahead there but little Bring john was right. was good enough to find a way back at least based on arabia it does feel mm -hmm. like at this level we knew hidden cut four was going to be close all around this might be another one that goes to five games um yeah. before we hop into game two reminders we'll go to philip the goods home maps now high tides and bay uh and before we go into the next game, thank you everyone for being a part of this again. Thank you, Crab Lord, for the Prime sub. Uh, Fubalstone, Chicken the Cat. There's been a lot of people supporting me in the prize pool, which is insane. Uh, also, hi, Mom, if you're out there. My my mom might be watching, so say hi, T90's mom. Uh, you ready, Slam? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Uh, okay, I have to be careful okay. with my language this year, by the way, because not that I'm a, a sailor, but last year I got a call from my, my granny after Hidden Cup 3, and she was like, you know, congratulations, you hit those records. It's it's very. She was very happy for me, and then she was like, and I heard some words out of your mouth that I would have <laughs> never imagined hearing out of my grandson, and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the games were epic, Grandma. The games were epic. I'm so sorry. So uh, Mongols here, Slam, and immediate zebra push for Little John. And uh, Philip the Good is Lithuanian. Sick stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm seeing Mongols and Lithuanians. And first thing I'm thinking is, I thought Bay was in this map draft. Was it not? Yeah, it was. I think it was. And these are two sieves I would, I'm thinking, okay, well, clearly one of these guys is using those sieves for Bay. Okay, guess not. Hmm. You know, Slam, this is not to imply that points you have brought up previously in our cast were poor, but that was excellent. <laughs> All right? That was excellent because you're right. Lithuanians and Mongols are top tier on Bay. Um, yeah, right. And I, I could also see them being top tier here for similar reasons. Uh, Mongols bring in food a lot faster, and then Lithuanians start with more food, which means that they can go to wood a bit early and then mm -hmm. can try and control the northern area. Yeah, and this is one map which I didn't have the chance of playing. Like, I didn't practice it for the qualification yeah, stages yeah. or anything. So, you know, maybe these players have realized that they come in, you know, uh, more handy on, on this map. So, okay. Um, let me ask you this. What do you think 
if you were to rank Little John's Lumber Camp on a scale of 1 to 10, <laughs> what ranking would you give that? Um, doubt. That's the ranking. I had the no, same. I... <laughs> go ahead, Wait, go ahead. Are you serious? Is that what you're going to say? Let's see if he weakens the board with the TC. <clears throat> okay, okay. Let's I see. forget if he did it last time. Oh, oh never mind. No, no, no. no, no. Okay, not all right, doubt. All not right. doubt. Not doubt. Definitely not doubt. <laughs> uh, the lumber camp then is... It's all right. It's all right. Okay. I just... <laughs> I feel like he chops through a few trees there. He's got to rebuild a new one. But the way yeah. that wood line's shaped is really awkward in general. So. Yeah, that's probably what it was. It's got that little hole in the front there, mm -hmm. so it's kind of awkward. And, you know, overall, it's in a pretty safe spot. It's in the back, so that's nice. I like how these rhinos have, have died laying down the exact same direction. You notice that? Underneath yeah, the TC for Little John? We'll zoom in to that's get max, max carnage here. Yeah, that is perfect. I've never seen that before. And we see Vils yeah, they... going out to the middle now, Slam. Sometimes it makes it a little tricky because you don't know which one you're gathering from if you've not finished the previous one. Mm -hmm. Take a moment with the scouts and uh, what? How did that scout get an extra hit for Little John? That was weird. But both players going to the island to dock because yeah. the that's where you can have the shorefish. Last year, Hidden Cup, you could not drop off food at docks. Now you can, so mm -hmm. it's important to, to pay attention to that. We actually do not have the shorefish anywhere else, so... Makes them very close together. I, I think I did have I did have one chance to um, play this map, and I made the mistake of throwing because I hadn't played it yet. I threw down a dock right on the marsh, okay. and then later, once I figured it out, I went, "Oh, okay, yeah, shore fish in the middle is even you have more access to more fish if you go mm -hmm. on the middle island as well." So, yeah, from a balance perspective, we did a lot of tests on it, and the idea behind it was that it makes it more risky to choose water because that means you're going to be right next to the enemy there. Um, yeah. And it just forces transitions onto land a bit faster than, than last year's version. But uh, I still do kind of like the idea of maybe making your second dock over towards the side. You know, it's safer. You yeah. don't need to shore fish then. And if Philip start here, he's Lithuanian's. And um, sometimes you see from Lithuanians them just going for a, a lumber right away. Now, I didn't catch that. Do you know if Philip went for that build? Because with Lith Lithuanians, you can get away with just going for a lumber first. Oh, big moment here, Slam. You oh, know, yeah. I was paying attention to it. He didn't <laughs> He didn't do it quite as early. Yeah. Um, which, honestly, I feel like is a good thing because if you do it too early, it takes a while to dock, and then your uptime will be later than Mongols because you're not taking as much mm -hmm. food. So... I mean, Little John's looking strong That's here. Higher point, HP yeah. Scout will actually find some goats that little that Philip never had. And he's returning them. Uh, I, no, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> strolling. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, it, though. For, for a split second, it looked like he was going to bring them back to red. Yeah. Double dock in the, in the middle um, and advantage to Mongols if it is about winning water. And both players trying the same strat here, Slim. Yeah, it's neck and neck here. Uh... But yeah, Mongols player is definitely going to have the advantage and getting those early fire ships out, I think, is the difference, you know, between night and day here. Right. Now, scouts alive for both. So they might want to scout the enemy to see if there's a barracks out there, if they make a switch of any kind. Both players looking, looking around. Now, if you both commit to water, especially with how tight these build orders are, Slam, sometimes you can just lose the game because... It's you've committed everything to trying to win a certain area of the map and then you lose that and you're you're somehow feeling like you can't do anything else. So I think it's important, especially for Philip, yeah. to make sure he scouts what the enemy's up to and if he can see that he's losing water, maybe make a switch on the land and the first fishing ship has gone down. You know, n now that I'm seeing these sieves and you know how this map is played out, it is pretty much very similar to Bay. You know, like yeah. it, it looks exactly the same. The difference is, you know, the docks are going to be much further out, so it's going to be not as efficient. Um, and then obviously the map's a lot more open. But um, the same, the meta is very similar for the first chunk of the game. I'd say this here, the water is a lot more important because on Bay you have eight fish total. Uh, here you're going to have a lot more than that. Probably double, if not more. And then plus it controls the gold if you have it too. So this is more of a water-focused map than Bay. And <clears throat> Philip the Good falling behind and not repairing, which is a little bit of a surprise here. Just sailing around. That's weird. 
Yeah, I think initially because there was the f three, four ships that were on versus two. So he just was thinking, I got to get out of here. Oh, big demo potential. And honestly, that was amazing from Philip the Good. That demo didn't hit anything. Yeah. That, that could swing it too because you not only produce that demo, which takes time, but then the demo doesn't have any effect. Oof. And suddenly you're behind. And look what a missed demo can do. At least there, Philip the Good got some value. And it's three docks against two yeah some weak ones in here still but looking good for philip i'm starting to wonder if, if philip could be accm okay you think an accm because if there's any player that i've come across that's gone you know maybe three docks on bay or i mean, I, I don't recall uh what he was doing during the qualification stage okay. but Let's just say through some, what you know, way back at the beginning, few practice games here and there. Um, it could be him, because I, I know he does like three docks in these situations. ACCM, one of, uh, I mean, all the qualifiers were, were god tier, but he's probably one of the players, one of the few players going into the qualifier where we said he will make it. You know, like mm, he's yeah. he's that good. Velez and ACCM were the two where I said he is going to qualify. And now, granted, Daniel gave him a run for his money. Daniel, very close to... Yeah. Wait a second. What is... Little John is going to snipe this scout now, and Philip was just sitting there. But, yeah, I mean, it's not a name. Because when people are watching and get trying to guess, they see quality play, and they're going to guess the same five or six players. But he's out there, and we haven't seen a lot of big shouts for him, Slam. So, maybe... Yeah. Same with Barrels too. I don't think in there, you know, Barrels for me is sort of the pick where if, if I absolutely have zero clue, then I'm just going to, am I, I'm going to pull the Barrels card. Like, okay. It was clearly Barrels because I, I don't know much about Barrels gameplay. Yeah. So, well, he, he walls real early. I think Barrels could have been Gonzalo or, um, who is the other one that was walling a lot and booming a lot, chat? Um, trying to think of some names here. But yeah, Barrels has been a big question mark. Uh, you know, it's it's his biggest event he's qualified for. Man, look at those walls from Philip. Again, okay, I, I end up uh, from the time that I stream and, and end up playing, I, I'm versus ACCM quite often. Yeah, and I do yeah. know ACCM doesn't mind doing big walls if it ends up him ends up him having you know a nice closed up base so yeah and it doesn't you know a lot of people were, were mentioning some names i think this might start crossing some names off the list because that's a big investment into walls there it's huge yeah. yeah yeah um and it's not really it's not that you can't play the map this way but i i don't think it's going to do you any favors slam it really because the best thing for you is to invest not into walls but collect resources and make military yeah. you've seen this approach from little john he's got hunt coming in now still with mongols Got some farms out. He's going to have fletching soon. He's making more and more archers. And the berries are forward, so the skirms are going to have to stick around. Look how weak his villagers are on berries. Yeah. And... Yeah, and it looks like, well, Philip does not have fletching yet, so I don't think he can engage on this archer. He might be able to. He's got quite a few skirms. Hey, two villagers picked their slam. Now, it's important to note wow. that okay. despite the vil picks and the eco KD, um, actually, Eco KD looks insane for Little John, but Philip can make more fishing ship. So his food eco might be fine, but his gold eco, whew, 600 gold in the bank. He probably needs to make a market. Yeah. You know, another interesting move, and I'm so stuck on ACCM now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's locked in. I can't get out. <laughs> uh, his army, whenever I play against him, do you ever remember the the good old um, thing called the Pike Patrol that people used to call it, where your yep. army would would fire and then they go forward? Now I don't know if that still works. And I know it doesn't work as well if there is something along the lines of that. But I know ACCM does something really interesting whenever he chases after you. Um, there's something weird going on there. Okay. It almost looks like a bit of a Pike Patrol. But you I've know been very annoyed because he always catches up to me. <laughs> Well, maybe he was playing Lithuanians <laughs> with faster skirmishers slam. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> so if it's, if it's the skirmishers catching archers, it might be the fact yeah, that but, we're okay. talking about Lithuanian skirm for the time but, being. But even without Lithuanians, it, what I'm saying is still applying to, to how I felt against I just them. love, I just, there's something about how you said that. He's like, he just always catches up to me. It's, he it does. sounded so, so defeated in a sense. Okay, well, I know. not the best macro for Philip, but... Arena experts will agree. Market, 
is great to use at times. And look at that. Now you have the food income that's somewhat stable on water. You have the market, which helps give a boost. And now you have a better, a stronger military on land. And little John very much on the back foot. Yeah, and he is not even on his way up to Castle Age either. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, are these docks really going to pay off? Because Philip is on his way up. He already sees them. Ooh, wow. And he'll a... just double down. That's a big investment to have to redock. That shows yeah, me that Little yeah. John feels like if he doesn't contest on water, this game is over. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. this is looking really good for Philip. Philip in a good spot here. Uh, walls not yet completed. This is always really tough because you don't lose Vils to this force, really, but you can't fight it unless you have your own skirmishers. I hate... Yeah. Whoa, did he just... Did, did that skirmisher just have a heart attack? Did that get hit by something? Yeah, what happened? I have no idea. What? Eat your vegetables, kids. What in the... <laughs> hey... <laughs> not, not to throw you off here, but change topic. I was going to say Little John is open, but no, he's actually seeing the hole now. Okay. Yeah, for a second I thought it was going to go unnoticed. Sorry if I got speechless there for a moment. I can't figure that out because I could see deleting a skirm if you were housed, but he wasn't housed. He wasn't pop locked. So I have no clue why that happened. Worth Definitely worth seeing on the, the replay later. Yeah, yeah, I did tag it, so I got that did one. You? We'll look oh, back perfect. later. We'll zoom in, do super slow mo on that moment. <laughs> well, Sam, we've got a market up here, and we do have four fire galleys for Little John. Uh, this is forcing a reaction now from Philip the Good, but Philip with five fires and the ability to upgrade on water. And I think Philip is just doubling down on water just to make sure it's protected. And I also think it's smart yeah. to not make too many more fishing ships, just protect these for now. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I, this investment into water from Little John, I mean, it seemed, probably seemed like a good idea at first from him. Yeah. But now it's just looking like it's just been an investment into resources that are just being thrown away. Ooh, Philip is going to dive? Philip is going to dive underneath the town center. We have the quick gates from oh, Little John and denies man. it. And you know what's so annoying? It's ACCM does that to me all the time. <laughs> So little John, little John is ACCM too. All right, and you know why no, little John no, had to no. do? Oh, the, di the diving part. Oh, okay, the yeah. diving part. Oh, I see. So Slam still stuck on that. Okay, yeah. All right, I, I like it, Slam. This is why we bring a player in because especially you've got you've got some experience against some of the the harder players to guess. And I guess the counterattack has worked for little John, but the TC is still going to go up. Little John's micro could have been better there. And this army will get destroyed by the knights. Yeah. And Philip the Good is on two TCs now. And he's going to have all that fishing eco. So he is still sitting in a really nice spot. I feel like Little John, like the gates and the houses, it looks good. And then you realize how bad the eco is for Little John. I mean, he's got seven on yeah. food, no horse collar yet. Adding a second town center. How on earth? Look at the idols in the wood line now. I mean, this is a disaster for Little John. Yeah, it is looking pretty rough there. And, you know, villager count, though, is still quite even. He's killed a lot. Even on the wood line, it looks like he's killed two before this army goes down. So I give yeah. him credit there, I suppose, for killing a lot. But I think having consistent economy to create more is always really important. And that's where Philip the Good is at. He's at tw excuse me, 20 on food. Yeah. And he doesn't, he's missing some stone. Wait, am I, am I? He's added a Philip TC the... if you're looking at, at Little John oh, or? Uh, Philip the Good. Oh. Oh, maybe he sold, uh, he probably sold some stone to go up then. Plan. Yeah, maybe that's why he was up a little bit earlier. He was really pushing for that. Okay. Well, he's, he's fishing and enjoying life out there. Um, transitioning into farms, which just feels so smooth, so perfect. And now you're Lithuanians yeah. with map control. And so now you can just get all the relics. And there's two relics in the south. There's relics in the middle. There's also relic on this island, which he's built houses all around. So Lithuanian knights are... I mean, knights in general right now feel like no joke. As the quick walls from Little John! Wow. That's why you don't go cab archer slam. That'll block yeah. your house walls. Yeah, <clears throat> I know. I, I agree. Uh, the, the, the good news about um, having Mongols here is, I mean, at least you could start pumping out some camels if you need to. True. Against this... Um, Lithuanian, Lithuanian knight. 
progression. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I like the idea of getting some relics. I like the idea of a third town center too for Philip. So maybe he'll buy the stone in a second slam. Let's see, little John. Yeah. Fall behind and score massively. It deletes the knight so it doesn't get converted. It's got one relic so far. Um, there's two sitting down in that one area, which hasn't been scouted for Philip. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, imagine they've got to know there's resources in the south. If they've just looked at this yeah. map a few times, it's been picked by Philip, so he has to know. <laughs> and, and do you know if there usually is two relics that spawn constantly in the south, or is that just kind of random? I am 97.1% sure there's always two in the south. And gotcha, then there's yeah. one on the island, which he's now getting, and then the other two are kind of in the middle area. Mm -hmm. and, and it makes sense. I mean, Philip, as you mentioned, he's picked this map. He's already sending a monk straight down there. Mm -hmm. Clearly, he knows what's up. All right. I love to see this message on screen. Thank you to Laba. Um, very jealous of the beers. Wish I could drink and cast, but uh, not really my strong suit. As we see some fancy little gates here to stop retreat or whatever, and... Yeah. Little John trying to mass cab archers and, and did get a conversion there, Slam. He did. And I think this transition to cab archers is going to be a little bit tricky. I mean, it's going to be another little while until he gets a good mm -hmm. number out. So I am a little bit curious if Philip's going to come forward and, and drop that, that siege workshop to get the Meganels rolling. I actually do like the cab archers in this spot because it feels like if you just go camels, they're going to get converted. Yeah. Um, if you go yeah. knights, you're fighting with worse knights. So I kind of, it feels like it's going to be tough for little John from here. I really like the, the side houses from Philip. That's annoying, but um, I think cav archers, while it might not be the best play, it might not work, it is a good option. Yeah, yeah. And he's now about to get, he's going to get a third relic soon. And like having that plus three attack, and he even just upgraded forging as well. So, I mean, Ooh. he's going to have plus four here shortly. Yeah, that this that's a tough thing is you can't you're, you're gonna try and mass units to take fights here, but you're not denying the relic control. Lithuanian's one of the most fun civs to play with with this bonus man. He's just something so satisfying about getting relics and making knights. You almost don't want to make <laughs> yeah, anything right. else. Forget about the scourge, right? <laughs> it's it's amazing. And it looks like Philip is adding another stable down. So um he's not messing around. Yeah, really. He's not messing around, still fish working for him. And I see another stable for Little John, maybe for some camels, but these knights feel so strong. We have 10 plus 3 attack right now. Here we go. Big fight here, Slam. And on the hill for the knights, there's far too many knights. Oh, man. Did I just hear a Wololo in there? I don't have a mod which plays the old Wololo, but I swear for a second, I heard Wololo. That's that's new one. All right, it's from Age of Empires one. I'll take it. There might be some day nine subs in chat. There you go, day nine subs. Let's go. He's added that recently. But the knights are just gonna storm underneath the TCs now. Yeah, this is looking rough for. I was just gonna mention earlier too that Little John's eco was looking pretty bad earlier, but he did a great job of making it look nice and clean. Yeah. I mean, until this is happening. <laughs> until this. You should have said it a bit earlier, Slam. Yeah, dude. This is. I feel like it's worth it to toss away these knights because you have the eco to make more, which I feel is a, yeah. it's not a new thing to our game, but back like four years ago, if we were watching a game like this, we'd be saying, why is he tossing away knights under his town centers? Yeah. Now people just say, whatever, as long as I've got farms, I'm just going to yeah, make more. Yeah. So. And one thing Doubt always used to used to preach back in the day, he'd always say, hey, you know, even if your your knight isn't making many kills or just running around TCs, you're causing idle time in the TCs. Like, yeah. he's got, you know, eight, ten vills in the main TC that have been idle for... Pro it might get close to a minute here. Mm -hmm. You know, Slam, as far as the predictions go, because Game 1 Arabia looked really slick, right? Mm -hmm. Has anything changed in your mind? You said ACCM for Philip the Good, but I remember players were saying... I mean, viewers, excuse me, were like, Leary versus Yo. Has anything changed, perhaps, in this game? There's a lot of idle time with TCs and with villagers for both. Big stage, of course, but... Mm, I don't... No, I, I don't think... I still don't think Philip is, is Leary. There's just some... I don't know. I just can't see Leary doing a heat on an open map like this, doing a massive wall like that. I yeah, just feel okay. like he'd, he'd exchange that for maybe some sort of over aggression so he would never need it to defend or something. All right. Well, the GG's called, and it was going to 
it was impressive to see all the gates and the houses go down there, but it was too little. Too late for Little John. Little John, much to my dismay, does lose the game. But we move on to see game number three with it all tied up. And in this one, it was the, sl the small things early. It was Philip the Good being able to um, out-execute with the exact same build order on a map that's heavy with fishing ships, but also had the scout advantage. Also, I feel, had the tech advantage in mid-feudal and the castle age advantage with the market use. So, Yeah, impressive. it just seemed like one thing led to the next, getting the, you know, from the fishing, which gave him better eco, and then initially winning the water, adding that extra dock. It almost seemed like he'd won water even before adding that extra dock. Could be wrong, but either way, adding the third dock, I think, really just you know, made sure that he won it. He deleted a, a skirmisher. <clears throat> I'm rewatching this. He straight up. Uh, let's rewind. Capture H Pro. Thank you. Whoop. <laughs> you watch this moment. This is peak Age of Empires right here. I don't think anything hits this. Okay, wait for it. Whoop. Look, watch, watch, people. <laughs> How does that happen? Do you like maybe? You're on your army. I, the only thing I can think of is you're on your army, right? And you try and go to your base and delete something, but you misclick it. So your yeah. army's still selected, so you just click the ground. Did he delete anything? I, I don't know, so, man. So I will say, on one of our show matches of GL versus... Oh, I think it was the, the Finland. Okay. Uh, that was my pocket. We were going to... Okay hear me out we were going to lose anyways because the other side was dying and whatever and that wanted in on the back and i was moving too quickly i was trying to do things too quickly so i i had my tc selected and i quickly went over to my palisade to delete the palisade and i guess i was still locked onto my tc and i deleted my tc <laughs> <laughs> and then and then doubt doubt goes something like oh i'm like don't talk about it all right? <laughs> and then the game ended right after that <laughs> that's that's literally his response he's like oh oh, oh. <laughs> i was like oh i, I should i should have clipped that or something yeah but, well that's yeah. that's probably my guess but i was really it bothered me you know um but wow look at this little john actually had more wood collected just couldn't put that into food fast enough but the gold and the food the relics that's the sweet spot that lithuanians want to be in there with their knights and I don't think little John was necessarily unprepared. I think he was just absolutely outplayed there. And now mm -hmm, we talk yeah. home maps and little John's got uh, two to choose from here. Slam. Hmm. All right. So islands and cup cup being the first pick. Um, we've seen a lot of Celts and we've also seen Japanese on that map. So I think Celts are Japanese on cup. What about islands, though? I guess if it is islands, yeah. do you consider going Saracens, of all things? Yeah, that's a good point, because what else is there to go? I mean, maybe Byzantine still seems like it's probably, for Philip, it's saved for uh, Bay. <laughs> um, you know, I've seen oh, something. Oh, sorry, you were talking about Little John, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's let's hop into game three slam because I have a lot okay. to say. I've yeah. seen the sieves, I've seen the map. It won't be islands, so we can speculate if it gets there. But it's almost as if we've seen this recently, which always does make <laughs> you think: Is this that because looks... these guys are are practice partners with one of the former players? You know? Yeah, this is looking exactly the same. What do you know? Celts is even on the same side as well. Yeah. So for those that missed it. The John the Fearless versus Laloy best of five was incredible. Uh, and the final game was probably the game of Hidden Cup 4. So believe it or not, this is not a rerun, okay? This is live, all right? Everyone's always like, is this a rerun here on Twitch? Why is it that? No, it's not a rerun. It's actually a different game. The colors are swapped. Sorry for the deja vu. But uh, Britain's on the right side for Philip the Good, who loved to play his archers in game one Arabia. And then Celts for Little John on the left slam. This yep. is twice now we've seen Britons on Cup. And both players seemed a little bit nerdy. So it's just in the back of my mind making me shift a little bit. Maybe thinking Philip the Good knows John the Fearless. And they maybe practice together. Quite possibly, yeah. And most of all, I'm just I'm curious if Britons is going to win again. Yeah. I really want to see if, uh, you know, that ends up being a sieve that might have an upper edge or not. I, I mean, when we saw that game, we said that it could have gone either way. Yeah. 
Yeah, the beauty of Cup as well is this is probably going to play out completely differently. We did not see a dock early at all in that game. We might see players dock. We might not see players drush. We might not see players wall uh, like they did in that game five in the previous set. Yeah, and just looking at this map for a while, I just thought maybe golds constantly would spawn near the near the marsh where boats would be able to hit it. But I mean, Little John's map is really good. His gold's actually nicely protected. His berries are mm -hmm. in the back. You know, everything's just in a little cave there. So that's looking really good for Little John. Yeah, uh, the the second gold's a little uh, a little awkward. You know, normally you have at least another gold in the back. So that's on the side. That kind of sucks for yeah. Little John, but. I think the main gold is worse for Philip. That could be ranged by a galley. Uh, I would say that his gold with some walling are a little bit better in the back. But, you know, this... Yeah. Slam, I know this is going to sadden you because you've had your Black Forest days, but believe it or not, you can't just wall in Hidden Cup. You uh, actually have to make stuff to protect your, your, uh, your I base. Know. I'm, I know. It's, it's a tough one to swallow, but I'm trying my best. Okay, cool. Well, I just want to point that out. <laughs> Every, anytime <laughs> there's a map, you know, it's always like, well, that's a little bit different. And that's just how it, that, that's kind of yeah, the beauty yeah. in age in some ways, right? Is, is its randomness. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we oh, see early it. barracks. Yeah. Barracks for okay. Philip and Doc for that's, little John. Yeah. So we, we see the variation in the strategy already. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, and not only that, Philip has spotted this Doc. Sometimes you wonder if maybe a Doc that goes out a little bit like that is you know little john's hoping that maybe he won't be seen so early mm -hmm. but there's also better fish as well um but philip the good does see it and that's a bit unfortunate because i mean if you can't hit their eco you can always go over to the fish with your early militia and just annoy them like crazy yeah that was interesting to me how philip he checked all the possibilities you check the front on both sides usually but to check that island too is really thorough scouting <clears throat> yeah, um, right, yeah. And, and maybe Practice paying off there for Philip. He's probably had a practice partner or two, and uh, in some cases, players play against a bunch of different people. So he probably experienced it before and, and really learned a lesson there. But what? What? Wait a second. Little John is prepping palisades. What on earth is that nonsense? <laughs> oh boy. Did he even? Did he see the barracks yet? Oh, he did. He saw the barracks being constructed. Wow. Yeah, he saw it earlier, and now he's going to palisade at home. Now he's going to palisade his woodland. I mean, it looks ridiculous, but that's honestly brilliant. Yeah. That's probably the first I've seen fishing ships being palisaded in for protection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, you know what? What I will say is the fish that he does have, it's going to run out soon. It's only 150 feet remaining there. But I guess you can technically just walk through that little uh, passageway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or not walk. Fishing ships don't walk, but sail. And then be okay. So that's creative, and we have not even seen Philip go over there. He said whatever. Yeah, he basically just said, "No, I'm just gonna chill at the berries." Okay. Does he only make one? He only made one militia. Yeah, just one militia. Yeah. That's also really unique, and both are on the way to feudal age. So I guess maybe Little John figured, or, or Phil figured, excuse me, that he wasn't gonna be able to do a ton of damage, and he just wants to keep an eye on the golds. Yeah, and I mean, overall, it turns out, like, Little John has got a lot uh, more eco now. He's got the fishing ships. Um, he's Celts, too, so that's going to be nice for the wood gathering here. So, yeah, he might be a little bit ahead in eco. Might be a little bit more disorganized, though, because of this one militia that's causing yeah. all this trouble. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> the thing is, the militia is it's just, like, uh, just like a fly in the room, you know? It doesn't yeah. really do any damage, but it really annoys you. Just causes a reaction. Yeah, like little John was tempted to go for a house there to block it in, and Philip thought twice about it, like, okay, I know what you're doing, and now he even sees the barracks. It is really incredible how this the strategies have been different in this game, mm -hmm. and yet the scouting has been so good from both of them. Yeah. <gasps> oh! The trap from Philip! That was oh, sick! Yeah, I see that. And that right there is not something many players might do slam that was pretty cool that was pretty nice pretty clean All right well you know you've oh, got man. a dock going up on the side for philip and he knows to contest for the fishing ships and you see an outpost going over there for little john i feel like little john should scout that but then again the scout's dead so you can't yeah you can't do that yeah, but they keep catching each other though on what they're doing it's quite the scouting's been really good for for both of them this game mm -hmm. keeping aware of you know 
what each other, you know, what they're doing, so. Oh boy, big moment there. There's a weak villager for Little John. Little John will save her, uh, and she will have to work somewhere near the town center as we see archer range. But it almost feels like Philip is in the better position because of this dock on this side now. Yeah, Philip. But the, here's the other thing that's going for Little John. I mean, uh, it's hard to say. Yeah, like Little John does have four fishing ships. Maybe yeah, they're not the most true. efficient. But those are quite nice too. His eco is looking a little... Yeah, like he's got one lumber camp, whereas I think Philip's eco does look a lot more clean. Yeah. Minus the fishing ships. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with you on that. But the fishing ships have also brought in hundreds of food. So if you lose them now, yeah. you still have had some benefit. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Switch into the farms. Uh, someone in chat saying, Red is 100% Viper. Interesting. All right. 100%. <laughs> Fascinating. You know, just like Hidden Cup 3, Viper's been rather hard for me to pick out so far. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'll just be completely open with, you know, I like to keep it. I've already mentioned it, but I, I really do still think Admiral, Admiral? is Viper. Okay. Yeah, just what, one of the things that have stu uh, stood out for me was uh, using a mill as um, on the I deer. Know I keep saying. Uh, not only on the deer, but he likes to use it as a part of his main wall. So okay. he attached a barracks. No one attaches a barracks to a mill that I know <laughs> of besides Viper. So I don't know. All right, Slam. Well, whoever this Philip the Good player is, Philip the Good has surprised Little John at big time too. And one villager's already gone down. Now we've got a gate, but you just played yourself, villagers. You got to save. There you go. Ooh. Save yourself. Oh, but look at little Philip's TC. He's <gasps> because he's so busy microing somewhere else oh little john that's that's double trouble slam and now panic that's with stone walls and disaster for little john just like that a game just it's changed just over, with a yep. matter of five seconds it's not over actually because the fishing ships are still working there's still water control out there but i don't know how long that's gonna last because here comes philip the demo and three fires as little john's on the other side with fires but I think you save the demo here, Slam. You, you want to save yeah, that for I think any so too, Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, there goes the f the fishing days are over. So mm -hmm. hopefully it gave Little John the the benefit he was he was looking for. I mean, he is still loading food. He's got three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, um, I think a market could be in order here. When you fall behind a little bit, send a few extra villagers to gold, buy some food. Philip did in the previous yeah. game, even though he was in a good spot at that time. So. And it looks like little John is just going to keep going for skirm production. Um, this is still where I where I really do like Brits. I, just, I, I love the transition of going into Castle Age with, with our extra range on archers. Hello. So Sorry, uh -oh. Slam. Hello, little John. This is... This is, I mean, that's one that's gone down. The other two are weak now. Okay, the villager's over here to repair, I guess. <laughs> but that was a little suspect, if you ask me. But the repair villager is a good move, and it actually gets sniped. Uh, don't tell me that Philip's going to get two kills off this. Yikes. Oof, that was huge. Yeah, no, no doubt. And little John is going to clean up the archers in the back of his town. Yeah, not bad here, Slam. I, again, I think it's manageable, but overall, especially if you look at that eco KD, I think it tells the story here. And did a demo just? Yeah, demo just went off. But five to zero <laughs> eco KD, uh, and also lack of idle time for Philip. Philip has been untouched yeah. at home. He's collected his deer comfortably. Uh, he's also a sieve that tends to really become strong if they reach castle age faster. Yeah. It you know, I'm just looking back at Little John's base, and I see the stone walls there. Man, he must have really panicked when something was yeah. when those archers were over there, because there's a full <laughs> line of stone walls. Like, what was over there again? I think it was like four archers. Four point, archers, but... yeah. Does that tell you who that could be, possibly? <laughs> like, to, to panic no there or to add stone walls? Because some people are very yeah. hesitant about that. But he does have two bills that are just... Ha they've been having a discussion behind the wall for the longest time, and they haven't been working. Slackers, man. Slackers. I know. You know, and, and they're they're just... I feel like people watching this stream right now are doing this at work currently. <laughs> like, they're either supposed to be on a Zoom call, because this is during COVID, or they're in the back room, 
and they're just acting like they're in the bathroom or something just to watch <laughs> Hidden Cup. So this is you, they're people. They're still going. Yeah, thank you for for slacking at work for us. Not that I'm speaking of experience or from experience. I used to do that all the time yeah. before this was my full time gig. It's the stone wall's fault, man. Like it's just it's covering them up perfectly, and that's so tilting, yeah. dude. Because you think they're gonna be there till imp. <laughs> okay, just noticed. Oh, just one. wait. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's like, okay, I've got to actually earn a living, yeah. and this guy, he's getting paid by the hour, but he doesn't care. What? He clearly doesn't care. <laughs> oh no. Oh uh, well. I guess that what happened there oh, was. There he goes. Oh, there he goes. He's work okay. <clears throat> he Dude, snapped that, out of it. Like for me, the double trouble situation earlier with the army underneath the TC, the, and then also losing fills at the same time, and now realizing you've had two idols. That to me, and I'm not a massive tilter, would get under mm -hmm. my skin a little bit. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, at least the Kel Wood bonus is maybe making it up for those two vills. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Could be slam. Uh, there's not a dock on this right side, and so like we expected, the game has played out a little bit differently. Here comes yeah, Philip, yeah. the skirmisher leading the way to scout, and is getting crossbow with Bodkin with Britons. Yeah, and he just slipped in. I was concerned there for a second he wasn't going to get the war galley upgrade, but he is. So okay. that's going to help him against Little John because he's Little John's queuing up a bunch of fire ships. Interesting. Now drawing some similarities to the previous game of course but it does feel like little john is not very protected here uh i don't hate the tc i just hate britain range the are down yeah. already i mean it's hard to say because you know when he first put that tc down he's like well i'll protect attack coming from the south but yeah there's two vital spots and that's probably why he rushed the siege workshop too because he realized this tc isn't gonna cover it for me every time i see armies run in now i'm gonna think about accm because of you slam <laughs> he thought about it there he's a diver he's a diver Ooh, but look at the fires in the northern area from little john not bad not bad oh, at I all i didn't even see what happened but I, I do remember red had a bunch of fire ships and now they're gone now let me look at the tc idle time that makes sense fill up with three minutes of tc idle time that explains the situation here, because the prize he's behind an eco. Now, does he want to venture too far over this way? There are some demos out there. Oh, okay, he's... Demo micro. <clears throat> that's that's what the game looks like in 2021. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to try and slip by. Yeah, looks like he'll be able to slip by still. That was good micro, and the knight's also taking out any skirms there. Now you've got Kelt Scorpions, and... Oh... Is that early? I think that's that is early. That it Don't feels I... for this tournament right here, for the stakes, it's not over yet, Slam. Especially when you've got two no, scorpions coming not. this way. Yeah, and even the vill count. I mean, it's still forty-six to forty-three. I mean, he's got he's got three more vills. I'm obviously he can't see that. Yeah. But, now um... you look at the score though. And just the way it all feels, right? You know that your eco is delayed. Yeah. You know eco upgrades suck. Like, I mean, he doesn't have the wood upgrade. Can't afford it. Doesn't have horse color. Can't afford it. Um, it, I would say it's an early GG, but you see the score, and the score tends to not lie in these situations, and he probably feels like he just can't bring it back. But that's a lack yeah. of confidence, perhaps, which... You know, that's, that's just not good to see uh -oh. going into the next game. <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to uh, drop a name there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> like, Viper. Like, yeah, don't do it. Viper don't do is it. just not... Listen, this Viper guy is not a confident <laughs> player, you know? And Viper tilts so easily that he would always call the GG in that spot. So clearly that's the Viper. Yep. Yeah, Definitely. it makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully Viper can step it up, man. He really has not done good in Hidden Cups. Uh, uh, here's the eco difference, and I guess it makes sense that Celts, even with the two villagers that were watching Hidden Cup at work, uh, would have more wood, but more, a lot more food for Philip the Good uh, and more gold, and I think it would have snowballed a little bit if the game continued. Yeah. Man, and, like, even he even had the resources to build that third TC if he wanted to, like yeah. the Celts player. He could have just swapped it down to the stone in the south, but I mean, but I mean, it happens. I, I, we're not saying that it would have looked good in ten minutes, chat. Yeah, we're not saying that it would have looked good. We're just saying that 
Philip would have to like make your opponent work for the win, right? Philip has to do everything right to clear out the game from there. But uh Oh, Slam, my hero. I feel like every year actually no, last year Hidden Cup, the hero I chose did <laughs> oh, decently. Right. But um Little John is staring at the face of defeat here. And it will be on islands with Japanese, Persians, and Saracens as Civ options. Uh, what are you thinking? Japanese, Saracens, and Persians. So, I mean, Bay is still there. I am seeing Persians for Bay. Um, for islands, I don't know. I think Japanese is probably going to be a, perhaps a safer pick i mean yeah. you're usually going to see japanese more so in water maps saracen seems like more of a, you know if he didn't have japanese available let's go for saracens i but, think yeah. see japanese has been really strong on bay true so yeah. you might want to save japanese for that but also persians has been strong on bay so you could well not strong but picked a lot i don't think strong is the right word there yeah um so the only Civ that probably doesn't fit for me on Bay would be Saracens. If you want to play with your options, maybe you pick Saracens here on Islands. Mm, okay, yeah. Okay, well, uh, game yeah. four it is. Let's hop in. Thank okay. you very much, everyone, for the support today, and I will continue to say that over the next two. I hope you guys are ready. I hope you have snacks. I hope you have the time, because the weekend's only going to be more insane. And here we are, Slam, another Islands game. We've seen a lot of Islands in Hidden Cup yeah, 4. Crazy. Have, yeah, And surprisingly, none of them have gone to the point yet where the wood has been used up completely on both Islands, or mm -hmm. at least one. Because that is something that's actually not that uncommon. I think the drafting has been really smart from players. They're eliminating top-tier water sips. We have not seen Portuguese versus Italians at all, I think, in the main event. Chat could have to correct yeah. me, but but I think the drafting's been smart to prevent those situations. I also think that the players who are picking islands tend to have a good strategy down. Uh, more often than yeah. not, they're playing it against players who might not prefer a map like islands. And so Philip the Good has Malay, a sieve that's not at all bad. But I think sometimes if you're not a water player slam, and you might relate to this, I know I do, you just think... Let's just make stuff on water and hope for the best, and that can sometimes uh, get you in a rough spot where the enemy expects you to try to do that and does something different. Yeah. H have you seen Saracens yet on uh, Islands? I have not. Now, well, yeah. the qualifier we did, Yeah. and I think it was... No, it wasn't Vivi. Was it Vivi? Who was it? I forget who it was, Slam. It might have been in the first or second yeah. round. I cast it so much, but I like it for a galley opening, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean that. This is I'm kind of I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this this pans out here because I'm guessing galleys as well. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you can always abuse the market too. Maybe you get some nice nice fast castle time to follow up. Right now, both players. I, I did make a video where we talked about people luring in boars in a certain way. Now there was someone who did the four four trick uh, yesterday. And uh, I immediately ruined my theory because I was like, this person doesn't feel like Hera. And according to the games I looked at, <laughs> only Hera would do that. But I'm feeling good at least that when we saw Philip, or not Philip, excuse me, John the Fearless, who we believe might be Hera, we'll find out on Sunday uh, that we also saw that technique. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, and, they're know, both weakening the boards. So. Another thing I do know about ACCM is I'm pretty sure he seems, in my eyes, like more of a landing player, uh, mixed in of water. So um, I wonder if we'll see a landing this game. Does anyone remember what the Civ matchup was between Barrels and Heart? It was Barrels and Heart best of seven on Islands. I recall the series. I believe that it was Italians for Heart. But I do not recall what the civilization was. Maybe that was Portuguese? It was Italian Portuguese. Okay. Because Barles is kind of that wild card player of the 16 who uh, may be a surprise to some to make it in. And he straight up said, I always try and take the fights to land. So. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Barles said that. Is that. Barles did, yeah. Or, and it was oh, funny. Barles, he, was, okay. he was like. Uh, you know, um, I knew that Hart didn't like water. 
Uh, and so I figured I'd take the fight to land because I also hate water too. So, <laughs> yeah. clever, very clever. Barls, both these. Th yeah. Sorry, Slam. I feel like Barls is probably watching this, and like, on one on one hand, he's probably offended. Like, how dare you assume that every time someone's unconvincing, it's me? <laughs> but then on the other hand, we we have actually guessed him quite a few times, and if it ends up being like a big name, we'll be like, oh, thanks, guys, appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. These these starts are looking um pretty much identical. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much a mirrored match here, except, I mean, Malay is going to have that nice benefit of getting up to the next age a lot quicker. And there's... Oh, oh I thought I saw a transport ship in, in the red dock. It was just a fishing ship. My eyes are playing tricks. Okay. So it's been a long day. Um, I know you were watching some of the earlier sets, too, before you joined. I'm definitely... <laughs> yeah. Definitely starting to feel the fatigue <laughs> at this point. Let's see. I've been live for who's counting eight or nine hours now. No biggie. But Slam, I'm really liking Phillips build up much faster. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll probably get the fire galleys out fast. It's it's really fast. Like that's the tricky part about Malay sometimes is they can be a bit deceiving. You click up at a certain time, and before you know it, you're in feudal age, and you have no resources because mm -hmm. you're up way too early. Um, and it kind of looks like that for him. I mean, 8.30 versus a sieve that could go 9.30 but have two docks up. Yeah. Um, yeah, not too sure. It, yeah, it just, it, it, I guess, depends on how much damage you do because if you do damage with the early fire, then you're feeling good. Yeah. But if you don't do damage with the early fire, the enemy's probably going to have similar numbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really at the limit here, but up very fast. That was impressive. And this may work out good for Philip because I mean, Little John, his docks are at the front, whereas you know other games players will choose the back or side or whatever. So um, this is not the worst case scenario for him at all. Hey, thank you for the kind words, chat. By the way, appreciate it. You know what's weird? And this is a tiny thing that I only bring up when I'm tired. There's lily pads underneath some of the shorefish. I imagine that's a scripting thing to try and get the shorefish to show up consistently, but it's there sometimes, Slam. I had to talk about it. Uh, lily pads, really? I think it's what the shorefish. Are. Yeah, I think so. Right there. That's cute. Galley opening for Little John, so making use of the uh, faster firing galleys, but the fire ship's already here. Very quick, yeah. Uh, Philip's probably feeling pretty good about that. He's like, yeah, yikes, I was up really quick, mm -hmm. and, well, I'm making use of it, but the fishing he hasn't killed a fishing ship yet yeah i think galleys seem very strong in our current meta man i really could see but then again he doesn't quite have the numbers yet does he no i mean he's got three fire ships out now that he's got to deal with and how many galleys just two yeah this is it's unfortunate for little john um because i think in different situations the dogs probably wouldn't be so close. Might, wouldn't be so close, yeah. Yeah, or normally what happens is you have two docks and you, you send one fire to each side. In this case, Philip had one fire and he got the yeah. correct side, you know? Yeah, makes sense, yeah. Galley's maybe running out for some counter damage, but they find the fires and the galley opening not looking good at all here. No, but we... Uh, I'm waiting to see the market from Saracens. It's, it's <laughs> so cheap to get up, you know, 75 wood, and then you can do whatever you want after that. It's like, imagine being new here today, Slam. We're talking about how the galleys fire faster, and someone's just sitting there unimpressed, like, yeah, well, show me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to see it in action. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. It's yeah. done nothing so far. I know. I mean, that was, uh, for me, that was the main hype for the Saracens right now. Yeah, but the market is huge because oftentimes on islands mm -hmm. about executing with with eco too and this philip the good player honestly looks amazing on with, with yeah. build order situations and i recall um some of the builds that philip had gone for earlier in the series were very technical like the game one drush into 27 pop feudal uh perfect mm -hmm. the the second uh or the previous game he had two lumber camps with clean builds up to fast feudal so i think it suits yeah. him a little bit to have a build order map which is what this is. Yeah, and Philip is going straight for a barracks too. So I don't know if this is because he realizes little John's maybe giving up due to score. You know, he's looking mm -hmm. to score and maybe he thinks he's going to get a landing soon or maybe he wants to land himself. But either way, there's a barracks going up. 
Yeah, it's it's an interesting one right here. I think archer range and transporting over a few archers would possibly kill Little John, as Little John is yeah. focused on water right now. But then again, the galleys are in action. <clears throat> yeah. Took some and time. Maybe, though. maybe that was part of Philip's plan. Maybe he thought, yeah, you know these. These numbers from Little John are going to get bigger and bigger. It might be best to, you know, swerve another way now and, and land because the fire ships will probably only get me so far. What's weird to me is how. See, now you've got that galley mass, and the galley mass from Little John could deny any transport. So it's weird to me, and you could almost see it, is right when he started to invest into the land, he started to lose control on water. But interesting <clears throat> surrounds here. <sighs> Like, I think the galleys should be more than fine here still. You're at this point yeah. two-shotting at the very least. Look at the score slam. That's crazy. Yeah, completely switched. And then just having the numbers that Little John has out for the game, like, that's probably, he's probably feeling pretty good right now. Mm -hmm. um, just like you mentioned, if you're able to get two two hits. Oh, a demo. Oh, my goodness. I, I just missed that there. How many kills did that bring in? Uh, did it even do anything? I think oh, yeah, it, it weakened yeah. a couple. I think it got one or two, yeah. but that was sneaky. But the issue is he's YOLO'd everything to wood, everything to gold to get that galley mass. And the enemy has yeah. had fishing ships and has macroed well. So the transport's still got to happen here. But you imagine with Malay, the Malay player is going to be up to cast late significantly faster. Yeah, and you got to check this out. Little John is mining stone, and I'm guessing that's for some better market abuse. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. I mean, great. it's pretty convenient when you need a tower if archers arrive. Yeah, sell True, the stone, yeah. buy food. That's the Saracen market for you. Yeah. Stone thing's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that on islands. You tend to see that from players like Tato uh, when he uses Saracens on land maps, but then again, we haven't seen Saracens much at all. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I mean, you brought up a good point too. Like, if Philip decides to land, he's got stone backed up for perhaps a tower. Um, <laughs> Wait a second. If Little John finds this, he's going to be like, what? <laughs> Look, he sees the transport ship, dude. These archers are never making it over. <clears throat> no, no. That poor transport ship. Wait, he's what? staying very still. <laughs> what? Oh. What if it's oh, a bait? No. To give Red confidence to get into the transport ship. Oh, wow. That's some next level IQ. Um, Little John! Okay, Little John sees it now. <laughs> but now can Little John he kill you, it? He heard you. <laughs> Dude, I'd be, Wait, the I'd way be you so screamed that was like, You are definitely cheering for Little, like, little John. Don't fail, man. I would never cheer. I would never be biased for my hero. How dare you? Oh, yeah. But it's just yeah. funny to me because the transport's looping around and there's two galleys on the other side. So if this doesn't work, that's a pretty big investment, Slam. <clears throat> yeah, and we know little John's going to be keen on looking over here. Or is he? Oh, he... my God. Uh... Oh, my God. It's oh, gonna... let them go. Let them go. Oh, what? my word, dude. He blocked it. He wow. blocked it. And now the fishing ships are here. How dare you doubt little John, ladies and gentlemen. 20 on water against seven, and I think Philip the Good just got completely out of sorts here. He thought he was gonna win water, he thought he could switch to land, it was not the time. Yikes. Um, yeah, I, I think Philip the Good is in trouble here. Once Little John is getting hit in castle here now, he's gonna get the galley upgrade, and yeah. he's up against Saracen galleys. It's still fascinating, though, because Little John's eco is a wreck. He doesn't even have a farm right now, and now he's scared about being landed, <laughs> yeah. so now he's going to add a siege workshop, which is actually really funny because I don't think anything will get over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, not a single farm, but hey, in the end, we got the market. And upgrades coming in here, Slam. Faster firing really does start to matter now, but I do like how Philip is picking off or trying to pick off some weak ones also on 2tc so i feel like the economy is going to be way better for philip in a few moments yeah and just looking at it too i see seven to eight build difference here yeah uh for, for philip here i'm really confused I, I go from thinking philip the good is philip the great and then i am reminded why he is just philip the good and then with little john you know it's 
it's zero to hero a little bit as well sometimes. Uh, game one was just sick, right? But maybe a player who shouldn't be playing Islands as a home map? I don't know. Clearly, this has probably been practiced. Yeah. Uh... I mean, I, I think if you could think of a player who's really good at booming in general and adapting, but not good with build orders, who would you think of? Because that's where I'm get what I'm getting from Little John, kind of. I, I I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. Um... I mean, there it's a top 16 in the world, so it's kind of hard to say. And now, not getting MBL vibes here. I think he'd be stronger in some ways. Honestly, yeah. I'm thinking back to to Vivi. Honestly. Vivi for Little John. Yeah, but would he pick Saracens? He would have picked... I'm still so shook by the fact that no one drafted Spanish in Hidden Cup 4 because that's always been my go-to to guess Vivi. So he must have he <sighs> yeah, must have realized exactly. that Spanish do not feel very strong. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, I, when, when, was it you or chat? Someone was mentioning Velez on the first game. Yeah. And my, my mind was just kind of sticking with that for a while. And I haven't thought of anyone I... else since then. You know, I could see him picking islands. That's the thing. And maybe things just haven't gone as, as planned. I mean, he is fixing his eco right now. And do keep in mind, too, little John did resign a little too early on. Well, possibly a little too early on. Mm -hmm. um, ay, ay, ay. The previous game. Yeah. Cup. The previous but, game. But, like, I, here's the deal. When when the early resigns come in, and it's unfortunate because Nikov's such a great player and such a nice guy. <laughs> it's unfortunate. But, but at, listen, Slam, you were thinking it, and you were making fun of me because you thought I was going to say it. But chat was saying it, and, and I don't think, like, Nikov puts on so much pressure on players. And mm. he is such, I feel like he would he would have a really slick build islands yeah. that it just doesn't give me huge nika vibes so i don't Man, know i i don't know either <clears throat> this this one's a mystery mystery for me that's for sure i think there's going to be a lot of mysteries too yeah because uh you know it could be a, a player that might not assume because they might not have picked their best strats yet maybe they're that confident or maybe they just haven't been able to execute in the level they we've come to expect from them but uh, Slam, it's it's an amazing eco for Philip the Good. 31 on food versus yeah. 7 right now. It's very hard yeah. to come back at now. And his resources are looking really good. All, you know, almost ready to hit that imp button. Yeah. Um, as to what he's going to go with. Right, so you're going to see sure. this dock go down. More docks going down. This is the thing about islands. It's all about winning water usually. So if you're behind yeah. an eco, but you're ahead by... 20 on water, you've got a chance to hold, especially with Saracen. Yeah, and Philip is getting some stone. Uh, that's always good as well, because you plant that castle down somewhere, so that way you can start creating more docks right around yeah. it. You know, it's funny. He's going to arrive to Imp, and he's barely going to have the resources to make stuff, because he's going to be there so I fast. Know. Malay, I know. It's a trap sieve. Sometimes when I play them, I think, well... Maybe when I have the resources, don't click up right away. <laughs> just keep building. Just that way. But I am think back and I'm like, no, just click up. Yeah. It's just, there's something strange about the sieve. Hmm. We've got two docks back here, but this is what Little John's looking for. Would be rather funny to see him take out the university before chemistry comes yeah. in. That's actually being repaired right now. Yeah. And, and Little John is really far from the imp. Yep. Um, and fast fire ships, like I've mentioned before, and we all know this, they're, like, there's a huge power spike with them. Yeah. You can chase off galleys forever. It's almost like having a Huskarl. Yeah. If it's again, if you wanted to compare it to a land unit, because Huskarls would have, what, eight Pierce armor, I think, uh, as a base mm -hmm. in Castle Age. And then if they're fighting a crossbow, crossbow do seven damage. Whereas fast fire has eight Pierce armor. I think it's what it is, or maybe nine. And a war galley does nine damage. So you're really just doing nothing if you are up against fast fires. And there's the click for that right now. But I mean, it's yeah. not like Red's in a great spot. He's on two docks. He's not going to have that many. No, not too many. But I mean, uh, he all he needs is maybe uh, five, 10, 15 maybe. Yeah. But there are some demos out there. Demos will make it a little bit more tricky. He also did a good job of saving some. He's got some in the north. He's got some in the south. He could just loop in with those ones. Yeah. 
It's like a little John. He's chasing away. He's running away with two demos in the top corner, yeah, top I see left. That. From <laughs> he's like, no, I'm not. I'm not using myself on you. <laughs> yeah, and this here come not, the fast fires from the you. front. This is where I can't wait to to show the timeline. This is where everything starts to shift massively. Yeah. And, and you're gonna start to see a lot of blue on water just disappear. Because the the galleys they just they tickle the health of these. You could mm -hmm. have a, you could have an army of 30, 40 castle age galleys, and you shoot at one of these fire ships, probably does one third of their HP or half or something yep. ridiculous. Probably the biggest power spike in the yeah. water meta is fast fire ship, which is yeah, what makes sure. which is what makes uh, having eco and, and good eco balance behind the water control so important. Which is yeah. why it's been preferred by good players over years, is because it's it's meticulous build orders. Amazing execution, followed by like that needing to continue for an early imp, and here comes a little sandwich slam. Not that you're at all familiar with this. Feels bad, man. Too soon. <laughs> Sorry, that was mean. <laughs> no, hey, uh, for some reason I sensed, you know, it, it, had, it had to get out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I mean, people, you know, my you could see the remnants of my archer ranges from my first tournament ever, right there on your screen. So it's it's really, you know, we. We make fun of ourselves in the casting booth, that's fair, I guess. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Hmm. Yeah, and it's not like Little John's really got the eco to go imp either. I don't I don't think market abuse is gonna save him here, but demos no, might. Is he... Man, yeah, he's not even... Okay, I, I hadn't clicked on Little John for a little while, mm -hmm. and I just assumed that he was on his way up. But no, I, at this point, I think, see, he's building fire ships. I think at this point, it might just be best just to spam out demo after demo. Yeah. I, I think they're going to be a lot cheaper, and you'll probably get more, more kills with them. Yeah, I got fires along the backside, fires over here, transport to the middle to build a castle there for good map control. It's also a great dock position, too, and with Malay, if you get Thalassocracy, I think that's how you say that, like your docks actually fire arrows, so you could... In theory, dock this island and fire arrows over to the Ooh. enemy island. That's great. That's a great move. I love it. I hope that happens. Here come the demos. The demos working slam and giving Little John some time. And the eco has caught up in terms of numbers, at least for Little John. But also the military numbers are about yeah. even now. So that's going to be brutal. He's just so far away. I mean, he, he's got to go that length of even the upgrade. And and even before he's clicked, there's a castle in the middle for yep. for Philip. And there's just so much going on here. I'm a little interested to see that Philip is not reseeding farms. Some people will still reseed farms because they feel like you know, having some food is nice. But others will think if this goes late, you don't want to waste wood on farms on islands. Yeah. I mean, there's probably a good balance in there somewhere. It's probably still good to keep some farms going once mm -hmm. you have all your eco upgrades. But um, yeah, wood should definitely be prioritized. All right, there's a castle there for Little John. Now that could actually, I'm not sure if that can be trebbed from the middle by red, but I know that blue could treb red from the shoreline. Um, and just kind of sitting in the choke point and for Little John, you're. It, maybe it's a qualifier player who worked for, for weeks and weeks and weeks to train and then qualify uh, under immense pressure. Or maybe you're a top eight player with a lot of a lot of hopes to get in top eight again. And you just don't want to call the GG in this spot, right? You want to continue to play. Yeah. I mean, it was looking really good for Little John earlier on. I think it was just Philip, his transition into Eco was just mm -hmm. a lot smoother. And then I think um, maybe because Little John relied so much on the market, uh, having zero farms, it benefited him for a short period of time. But then as Castaway went on, lacking those farms actually set him behind a little bit on Eco. Yep, it's all about balance in this game, man. And it's tough. There's power spikes and there's balance. And We've seen in other sets today, like, uh, you know, you were freaking out about the hunt in the one game. That's a power spike, right? <laughs> yeah, and then you got to yeah. transition into other sources of food. We see a forward mm -hmm. castle here from Philip the Good. So he really wants to take the fight to land. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's probably thinking, looking at his watch going, well, he's still not imp. Yeah. I mean, maybe I could just get the landing in now. I, I've secured the middle. Um, you know, he's just going down the checklist and he's thinking, well, what else does there do? Well, let's land him. So personally, and I think Philip the Good is still going to win the game and is still way ahead. I hate that castle. And in closer games, <laughs> if you don't have yes. anything to protect it, all that does is it gives someone with a defensive castle opportunity to treb you. So yeah. it is a little, 
I, I don't think this is a castle that you should necessarily do on island, yeah. but I can get the temptation. Uh, I totally agree. Islands is one of those maps where you, if it's somewhat of an even game, don't try and go for the kill at any point. You, you just have to embrace it and go for the long game, whether you like it or not. And sometimes yeah. when you dive in and land, you build a couple trebs out, but then you just get destroyed and you lose all those invested resources. Yeah, it, it's still, like I said, he's ahead. He's going to take out the Siege Workshop from the TCs here. He's got Galleons on the other side. Yeah, but I'm thinking maybe in a closer game, you castle that middle island. That would be the wiser play. But, yeah. you know, Little John is just waiting for these upgrades slam and unfortunately is now 30 military and it's 60 for Philip the Good. Yeah, and I don't see any trebs coming out. Oh, there is one treb he's built for that castle. Yep. But, I don't know. He's got crown. Okay. There it is. <laughs> yeah, there's the GG. Well, <laughs> Philip the Good played pretty darn good in this series, and we'll move on, knocking out my favorite hero feels bad oh, um, man. in the first round. Well, I'm not too upset about that slam. I, I want the best players to advance, and whoever these players were, Philip the Good was certainly the better of the two. I am confused because there's moments from Philip. Where I think the builders are extremely good, but maybe it's that mid game which is a little awkward. Maybe a bit of hesitancy there, which makes me think maybe not quite that top four, top five, but possibly someone in that top yeah. eight. You know? Yeah, because the, the just speaking about the first game, something didn't sit completely well with me that game from Philip. I know he went for the archer build, um, and it almost looked like Little John was going to be the you know, the player that was going to be ahead because he just seemed a lot more clean going for raids and mm -hmm. everything. Philip was kind of reacting near the end. But, um, yeah, no, I would agree with you on that. Something just, the first game. Usually with Aztecs, I think it could be a bit more efficient going for the Eagle build. But uh, hopefully yeah. we can see more Aztec games coming up and see, you know, what the top floor, top floor, top four players are going for. <laughs> Uh, that's Top funny. Floor. It's like there's a saying. It's like, is there a ceiling to the skill level or whatever? We're talking about floors now. Yeah. <laughs> Poor little John. No... We're talking about the floor now, not the ceiling. Uh... That was a top floor performance. Hey. Okay. Well, I have to say, I we end day two after seeing every single player slam, and in many ways, I feel like I've found some answers. A few players that move on to the quarters where I feel like I've got them pegged, but... There's yeah. others, and I'm, I'm, I'm really unsure. I'm going to have to rewatch some of those tonight yeah. before tomorrow quarterfinals begin. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. The only one I feel with, with like huge certainty is Edward Longshanks is being backed. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I mean, I think that was probably the first words I said when I got on here, and then after that. You know, I'm still leaning, really going down the, the, the tiers of confidence here from the player. You know, I go Admiral now. Uh, he's the guy that's going to bring the consequence for me without okay. dropping a name. So in so, your eyes, and you're not dropping the name, in your eyes, you think Admiral Yi Sun on day one was the Viper. Um, and many people thought the Master of the Templar was MBL. So I feel like MBL is one of the players that can get a win off Viper. Maybe not win that best of five. Hmm, yeah. That that I mean that's not the worst prediction on your end. Um, mm -hmm. We had John the Fearless clear as day to me. Either Hera or Leary, one of those two felt like yeah. Hera to me. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, Valio is the <sighs> only player to three zero slam. He was the only person so, to win three zero in the first round. Interesting. So that was the round that I did not see. Um, okay. So gotcha. I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go back on that and take a look. Maybe might change my opinion on, you know, a few of my guesses right now. Um, but as much uh, you know, all the names you've you've mentioned so far is probably as far as I would go with what I think so far. After Admiral, uh, you mentioned John the Fearless being Leary or Hera. I lean towards Hera, but I mean, if it turned out being Leary, I'd also be like, okay, well, still not a surprise because that yeah, player yeah. played absolutely amazing. Yeah, true. Um, but after that, I, I, it's so uncertain for me. So Evelo, Evelo, we'll get that down for before the next day. Evelo. All right. Well, um, I think I've got that there. Thank you slam for stopping by this is another hidden cup man of course you're competing in that qualifier and then you showed up to cast i had a gr great time hearing your insights 
and casting the games. And I think people think the same. So appreciate it, man. Yeah, I, I had a great time, and and thank you so much for uh, for inviting me to cast. And I am more stoked than ever to watch the rest of the games. So.